Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do something super casual and I'm going to paint my nails and chat with you guys. I had so much fun chatting with you last week when I showed you my everyday makeup routine and I still have a bunch of questions that you sent in from Instagram so I want to continue answering them and you guys really enjoyed that last video. It has been really fun for me to like sit down and chat with you guys on a regular basis I really enjoy it and I want to keep it up so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up to let me know and I'll continue but this is super chill like I'm just gonna paint my nails like I do on a regular Sunday Sundays are like when I like to sit down and do my nails it's my me time so I'm sharing it with you and this is super fun I already took off my nail polish I still need to like file and prep my nails and then I'm gonna be painting them with Sally Hansen pink a card. This is a really pretty shade. I was editing a vlog of me wearing this polish and I really liked the color of my nails so I went into my drawer and found it again. This color is honestly perfect for any time of year. I think a pale pink is universally acceptable. I've been wearing a lot of bright shades lately because um, it's warm outside and I've been a little bit tan lately but I think this is just gonna be really pretty. Also I am wearing my Girls Supporting Girls shirt which is uh, the merch of Adeline Morin. I have never purchased anyone's merch but I just felt compelled to purchase this. I really 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 love and respect Adeline. We actually both grew up in Brampton. She went to a high school near me and I never like met her or anything but I think that's pretty cool that we both grew up in Brampton just outside Toronto so I think that's pretty cool and I think she's doing really well. Wanted to support her and I love the meaning of this shirt. Girls supporting girls. That's definitely a movement that I want to support. I just had to get it and I think yellow has never been my color but I'm really liking this. All right I always put down paper towel and I'm just gonna start by lightly filing my nails. This is a nail filer that I got from a beauty supply store and then I'm just gonna buff them out after. The first question I have here is how to survive final weeks. Love you lots. So finals can be such a stressful time. I'm really glad that I'm done that part of my life as of right now, that chapter of my life being a student. And I found what really helped me during that time was to make a, a list of everything that I needed to complete and cross them off one by one because that felt really good. And then it also really felt comforting to me to know that I had everything that I needed to do, whether it was like study for an exam, make notes, like breaking them down into more manageable chunks and tasks, as well as like the assignments that go with uh, final assignments because I know finals week is not just about taking exams but there's also final projects to be completed as well so writing that all down onto one list kind of made me mentally see okay these are all the things that I need to do and it was more manageable because I knew every single thing that I needed to do was on this piece of paper before I can have some freedom and then finally like schedule in times to do them all you are committing yourself to a certain schedule where you know that everything can get done in an adequate amount of time and then you just have to stick to your schedule and motivate yourself push yourself to do it because if you you do not stick to your schedule then you're not going to be able to accomplish your goals another thing that really helped me stay motivated for finals week was to calculate what grades I needed to achieve on each final in order to get the grade in the class that I wanted and then I also would kind of look at like okay what's a worst case scenario type situation because that was also comforting to me so I'd put in like you know, what is the absolute lowest grade that I can achieve on here to still get like a decent grade. That's kind of how I got through finals week. My thumbnails have been really weird lately and I don't know how I want to file them. I've been trying to keep my nails a little bit more square. They're never perfect, except for my thumbs. I don't know what's going on. This next question here says, how old were you when you had your first job and where did you work? So I feel like a lot of you know this answer if you've been following me for a while. So my first job, actually, okay, hold on. I can answer this in two ways. So my very, very, very first job was I was a timekeeper for a summer hockey league. My brother always played hockey growing up and he was a referee during the summertime because that was like one of his first jobs. And during the summer, his timekeepers would never show up. So he ended up getting me a job, they paid cash, and I would sit in a really cold hockey arena for seven hours on Saturdays and Sundays with my little space heater, my Uggs and all like my winter coat in the middle of summer because it was so cold. He would always bring me along as his timekeeper so that he can guarantee that he always had a timekeeper for his games. 
and I would just sit in the little control booth and type in the score for these hockey games. So that was like my first official job, but it was cash and it was really casual. After that, my first official job, I worked retail and I worked at McCarthy's, which is the store that does uniforms for high schools and elementary schools in my area. I worked there, I wanna say, was it two and a half years, almost three years, I worked from when I was in grade 12 of high school, like right after I graduated high school was when I got that job. And it was a summer thing, so it was really a great gig for a student because it's a very seasonal job. You work pretty much full-time hours in the summer and then they let everyone go. But I actually got to stay on. Oh, and also everyone is students, everyone's friends. It's like a really fun um, work environment. My best friend Nikki also worked there. We worked like a little bit of an overlap a couple months, but then she got a different job and she moved on. So really enjoyed that. Yeah, so my first summer, they usually like keep on one or two staff members during the school year because the store is still open during the school year, but most of like the rush comes in the summer. So they usually keep on a few staff members. I was one of them. So I just continued working there while I was going to school, which was really cool because it was pretty casual. Um, I would work like on the weekends for eight hours maybe one day during the week if i had a day off i think i would typically work about 15 hours a week which worked out to be two full days of work most of the time like there would be one or two customers a day <laughs> it wasn't very busy i would get to bring my homework and do my homework there or hang out with the other girls there so i really enjoyed that job i think i learned a lot from that although i wasn't paid very much and it was just like a retail customer service job. I think I learned a lot from that because it operated like a one-on-one -on -one service model. So the customers couldn't touch any of the merchandise. You had to personally serve them, tell them what they needed for that school. If they were like a new student and they had never seen the uniform before, you were like the uniform expert and had to walk them through the entire process. And then all of the merchandise was stored in kind of like the back of the shop so it was like our warehouse there and you had to go get it for them so like they couldn't walk into the warehouse and pick it all themselves they had to wait at the front near the tables and the change rooms and then you like bring them out all their sizes they try it on and then you walk them to the cash so it was very personal you learn a lot because you have to like be an expert you learn how to make small talk and provide that excellent customer service after i think a month or two of working there i actually was able to move up to be a cashier at the front and deal with more of like the customer problems and then also um, we would come in early in the morning and kind of help restock the warehouse so you're learning like inventory things and we would fill the orders for the online store after about nine months there I got promoted to be a supervisor so for the rest of the time there I was a supervisor and then I actually moved stores when I moved so it's a little bit of a, a journey with that company and I really enjoyed it I feel like I learned a lot there were a few like issues along the way and also it wasn't always the best customer experience I think that the company had a few flaws in their experience and it was tough because I I felt like a lot of customers were always unsatisfied or whenever they came in it was always for a negative reason so that was a, like a little bit of a downfall of the job but other than that I felt like as a person and as a young person like that being one of my first jobs I think I learned a lot so if you watch my old vlog that was the job that I used to wear like that green uniform shirt and my navy blue pants and then I also got to meet a ton of you because it was like one store for a dedicated area so anyone who went to a um, like a Catholic high school or any private school that needed a school uniform in that area needed to come to that store. So I saw a, lot, a ton of people throughout the summers and especially those of you in high school, I met a ton of you and <laughs> you have pictures of me in that dorky green shirt. Okay, so I'm gonna move on here. So I'm going to apply my base coat and this is the Sally Hansen Complete Solo Manicure in their nail primer. This was from their Beautifier collection. I have a ton of Sally Hansen products because I worked with them over the last year. Also, I personally just love their stuff. It's really accessible because you can get it at Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart or any of the drugstores. So this next question says, do you have any tips on how to manage your finances now that you live on your own? What helps you stay within your budget? So when I moved out on my own, first of all, I waited until I had enough savings because I knew that things were expensive. This whole process was going to be expensive. I knew that if I didn't save the amount that I did that things would be really tight and I didn't want to have to stress about money at any point. I decided how much I needed to save up before moving out and then secondly I made an excel sheet 
before even moving out, calculating all of my monthly expenses and predicting, you know, like how much I would be saving every month and all of that before even making my decision to know if it was reasonable. So I knew the numbers and I did that for like I calculated kind of my income and all of my expenses for a year and then I even made another schedule that was for 18 months to see kind of like in what position I would be because I also have other financial goals as well. So I was very organized and did everything on Excel before even moving out. From there, on that Excel sheet, I knew kind of what my budget was going to look like on a monthly basis. So on an ongoing basis, I don't track my expenses because I know kind of like how much I spend on groceries and my internet bill is always the same and my hydro bill is always like about the same within like a $10 range depending on how much I use my air conditioning but I also am very like reasonable in my head that I know that I'm not gonna like go out and spend a bunch of money every single month but like maybe every month I will kind of like treat myself to something so I'll get some new work clothes one month or um, if I want to get a new piece of camera equipment so my answer to that is to pre-plan on Excel. I don't think you need to track things on a monthly basis because if you get into that routine and just know kind of what your budget is. But with that being said, I also kind of have like that pre-prediction on what like my bank account balance should be every month. So if things ever don't look good, then I'll go take like a deeper dive and I can export all my transactions from my online banking into Excel again, analyze things and see kind of where I'm going wrong, if I'm spending too much on something. Um, I've done that a few times to kind of reevaluate things, especially in December when it, there was like a lot of extra expenses for Christmas. I just wanted to make sure that I was on track. So every once in a while I do kind of like reevaluate things, but for the most part, I don't track things on a monthly basis because I'm already in that routine. I also have this wooden stick that I use to kind of clean up around my cuticles when I'm painting because sometimes I don't paint perfectly. I'm going to apply my first coat of this color. I I think it takes about two or three coats. So the next question is also about moving out. So this one says, what was the hardest part about moving out and living on your own? Probably like the loneliness factor. And I talked about this in my last video. Living alone has a lot of pros and cons. I really enjoy it and I, I wouldn't change it, <laughs> but it does have its times of loneliness. For me, I make sure that I am doing things outside of work and not just like going to work and coming home, going to work and coming home because Getting in that routine does make me feel lonely because then when I come home from work, I'm tired and I don't wanna do anything. And then I take a nap and I don't know, like it's a, just a vicious cycle and that's when I start to feel lonely. So I make a conscious effort to make plans with people ahead of time, do things in the community. So right now I'm playing soccer baseball with the city of Toronto, it is so much fun. And also I visit my family pretty often too. And that's what helps me not feel lonely. Another thing that I wanna know about living alone, meals can sometimes be hard because buying groceries and like pre-portioning for one person without wasting food is a little bit difficult. So that's why I meal prep. Also, I can get like pretty lazy with cooking too. So if I don't meal prep, then I'm not gonna eat a good dinner. I'm gonna eat like hummus and crackers and chicken nuggets. So I make sure to meal prep once a week. So I have my meals once or twice a week. So at that time I will meal prep my lunches and my dinners. So I've, I have a vlog of me doing this and I've done it in a few of my other vlogs because it's something I do on a weekly basis or I will not eat well for the week. So I know that that's something that I need to do for myself. It also helps me budget because then things are a lot more affordable. If I don't pre-make my lunch, then I buy lunch at work that is expensive. So that's another thing that kind of goes into budgeting and answers that other question that I was asked before about like managing my finances. I'm very strategic on the things that I spend my money on and I don't spend my money on. That allows me to like save in certain areas, but then I can spend in certain areas. So yeah, meals is uh, a tough one. If I don't pre-plan my meals, I eat like shit. My body is used to eating healthy foods. So if I don't eat healthy foods, then I just don't feel good. And then finally, the last thing that I have acknowledged as living alone is that if I don't do it, it's not getting done because there's absolutely no one else here to do it. For example, taking out the garbage. If I don't take out the garbage, it will sit there and start to smell. That's an annoying task that I don't like to do. And I actually need to do that right now. There's a full garbage can underneath my sink that is probably gonna start stinking soon. If I don't take it out, <laughs> this is the most real video ever. Can anyone else relate to these like living alone facts? <laughs> All right, 
this is the first coat so I am going to let that dry and answer another question. Do you recommend leaving my parents house in my first year of university or after I finish it? Honestly there's not like one perfect solution for everyone. It really depends on the circumstances. For me, I really liked that I lived at home with my parents during university and I don't think that I was ready. <laughs> this is what I always do. When my nails are wet and I have a hair on my face, I use this stick to push it out of my face. For me, it, it worked out well and I don't think that I was really ready to move out at that time. And I also think that I would not be in the financial situation that I am right now if I didn't live at home because I was able to save money and I was able to work a job. Not only was I saving, but I was earning more money too. And that's what allowed me to now live on my own um, and afford to live here and kind of have the savings that I do because I made those choices and also just like maturity wise like I think that was just a better fit for me and what I really enjoyed and now I am able to live on my own and move out now that I work downtown and and it's like a lot easier for me and I don't have to commute although I did commute for four years when I was in university for me it just worked out and that's like what I chose to do and I really liked my choice but for other people they live and thrive off of being on their own and I think that moving out at 18 when you are finished high school and moving to university was the perfect time for them so I really can't speak to that because it was my experience but I have a lot of friends that really enjoyed that and it really worked out for them and they are the person that they are today because of that I know this is not the best answer to your question but you really just need to like follow your heart and see what you think is the right decision and also look at your finances and see what is like financially the right decision so the next question says what is your opinion on following a career that is not associated with your degree after finishing university what would be your best advice to someone who just finished their schooling so my opinion on that is that you learn so much from working on the job that you don't necessarily learn in school and some degrees are just not set up in a way for students to learn everything. I think if you just finished a degree and are now pursuing a different career path, I think that's totally okay. Like you found something that makes you happy and you're really excited to go to work every day, but hey, you went to school for something that is totally not related, that is okay. And I don't think that it's a waste of money because I think that school has so many other benefits outside of what you were actually learning. I think it teaches you a lot of discipline, a lot of like social skills, and just a ton of transferable skills that you're going to learn in any degree anyways. So I don't think it matters. There's so many people that I work with that like have a philosophy degree and are now a project manager. So I don't think that that matters. And also if you find that maybe you do need to learn a few other skills, you can take additional courses at a community college, you can get a postgraduate certificate. I think there are so many options for you and I don't think that you need to put yourself into a narrow box. So it is several hours later and I'm really upset because I accidentally deleted the end of this video. It was probably for the better because this video was about 45 minutes long. I was clearly talking too much but I'm really upset that I accidentally deleted the footage. So overall I ended up doing three coats of pink a card and my nails look really awesome and then I um, finish it off with my favorite top coat which is the Sally Hansen Insta Dry top coat. I've been using this stuff for probably 10 years because I love it so much. It is the only top coat that I will choose to use um, because I find that my nails are so shiny and they actually dry properly when I use this stuff. This is what my finished nails turned out like. I really like them and I actually did my toes too <laughs> to match. I'm really mad that I deleted the footage accidentally. Oh so upset. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos. I would love to have you in the pretty community. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!